you will see the, the new pain in light of the confusion of the old. But that said, God chose to act out of love for us. Paul said it this way in Romans 5. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We like to think of ourselves as nice people, don't we? Right? We like to think of ourselves as decent, upstanding, good neighbors. Not so sure. <laughs> but when we were saved by God's action, we were still counted sinners. God loved us and saved us while we were yet sinners. Years ago in, in my shed when we first bought our house, I found this little wooden toolbox. It looked like it was a hundred years old. I don't know how old it actually was. It was beat up something terrible. And for a number of years, it stayed in my shed. And I thought about cleaning it up, and you know, it had the brass corners on it, and a, and a leather handle. And I thought about fixing it up. I just couldn't quite get rid of it. I mean, it had no real value. But every time I looked at it, I saw this great project. And I could see restoring this old toolbox to functional use again, and, and maybe keeping something interesting. Never quite got around to it. So I gave it to my dad. At that point, he was doing a lot of refinishing and cleaning up old wooden things and restoring them, putting them back into use. You know what? Still hasn't been done. <laughs> But we both saw in this box something delightful, something that, that was worthwhile to put some time and effort into it, something that was useful, something that had a, a beauty, a value. <clears throat> Apparently not enough to actually do anything, but we, we still saw it. It was just still too good to get rid of. God saw in us something of value, something worthwhile. And he loved us. Not because of what we had done. Not because of who our parents were. Not because we were exceptional. Not because we were perfect. But God saw in us something of worth and loved us and brought us Christ. That you and I could know life, be reconciled to God and know each other. It wasn't because of what we did or would do. It was simply because God loved us. Suppose if I'm honest, most days I would prefer to think that God saw me in a very valuable tool and, and you know something worthwhile that was extraordinary. But you know what? It's not the case. Oh, I'm unique and special. Yeah, I mean, we've all been told that, right? But at the end of the day, we're all pretty similar. We're flawed, we're broken, we're imperfect. 
We can be mean and hateful. We can be tender and kind. Some days we're really good at what we do, and some days we don't really want to do anything. Sound familiar? And yet, despite our flaws, our imperfections, God loved us, saved us, called us to new life. Maybe the question we should ask is why? Does God love me? You? I can't help but go back to the first moment when I met my son. It wasn't a rational choice to love him. It wasn't something I pondered long. But holding him I don't suspect that God regards us any differently. He loved us. Mary continued to sing, For his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength in his arm. He has scattered the crowd in the thoughts of their hearts. Those who love God, those are those who respect him, who, who fear him, who love him. But there are also those who love their neighbors. James said, if you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. If you keep the royal law of loving your neighbor as yourself, you're doing right. What does it mean to love your neighbor? Now, someone asked Jesus that very same question. He was an expert in the law, and he was seeking to justify himself. And he said, so who's my neighbor? Who am I responsible for loving? In the ancient world, it was a common understanding that things like love were limited, just like everything else that they knew. Water, food, grain, grazing space, whatever. Everything was limited. There's only so much of it. If you use it all right now, you don't have any until the next harvest. It, it was, everything was limited. And they understood concepts like love and honor and respect in the very same way. There's only so much of it. So who am I supposed to love? This limited resource. Who am I supposed to love? And Jesus told a story. A parable of the Good Samaritan. You know the story. The clergy get a bad, bad reading this. There's no way around it. The priest, the Levite, they walk by on the other side of the road. They don't want to touch the man that may be dead. They, they don't want anything to do with that. No. Here comes the bad guy in the culture, the Samaritan. The one that nobody wants. In fact, good Jews walked around Samaria because they didn't want to walk through it. Okay? It was the bad neighborhood that nobody wanted to go to. You just don't go there. But it's the guy from the bad neighborhood who stops, treats the wounds, puts the guy in his own donkey, takes him to a place where he can be cared for. Jesus asked a very simple question. Who was a neighbor to the man who fell in among the thieves? The answer was very simple. The one in whom, the one who had mercy on him. You know what Jesus said to do? His very next words were go and do likewise. It's easy to talk about love as a warm and fuzzy emotion. We sing songs about it, we write movies about it, we do this all the time. Love's action is a little different. 
Sometimes we're afraid to get our hands dirty. To really get involved in the mess of people's lives and love them where they are. But that's what God has done for us. That's the example. We were loved while we were yet sinners. And so as those who are Christians, little Christ, followers of Jesus, those who replicate what their master does, we're to love our neighbors. To have mercy on those who need it. Regardless of their origin. What I will say this day is love your neighbors recklessly. Freely. And genuinely. If you see need, help. If you see hurt, bind it up. Love those who need me. Or, as Jesus said it better, go and do likewise. Pray for me, please. Lord, give us courage to love. To love friends and neighbors, people who are easy and comfortable. But Lord, give us courage to love the unlovable, the, the hateful, the miserable, the difficult, the painful. Push us beyond the boundaries of only paying attention to those that our culture holds in high esteem. And help us to pick up the trend that we see so clearly in Scripture. To love those who are lost and broken. Difficult and painful. Unpleasant and hateful. Help us to love our neighbors and our enemies as you have loved us. We ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, what would you like to pray about this morning? If you could keep my brother Bill in your prayers. Um, Thursday he had his heart valve replaced. Luckily they were able to do it, that they did not have to do open heart surgery. So he came home on Friday. I talked to him yesterday. He's doing well. And also if you could keep Annette in your prayers. She sprained her ankle real bad a little over a week ago. So she's still struggling with that. So if you could keep her in your prayers too. And if you could keep me in your prayers. I did, re I did get a new job. So I start January 21st. So I'm very nervous about it. And I'm very nervous about giving my notice next week. I've been back to this place for 18 years. And I'm very nervous about giving my notice. I know it's not going to go over well. So you could be keeping me in your prayers. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. I'll do that. Thank you. I was happy and surprised to see my old friend Carl Lombach sitting here. Last time we laid eyes on each other was about 50 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> His dad and my dad and I were chemists together at Smith Klein French Laboratories, and we've been family friends for, you know, all through, through about high school and then kind of lost contact. Carl lives in Saudi Arabia. So, um, great to see him. Oh, yeah, you went to uh, the South. Right? Yeah. It's good to have you here with us. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Anything else this morning? I Ma just want to thank everyone for all the Christmas cards and explain why I didn't do any. I've been doing pretty well, uh, thanks to my family. This Christmas is very hard on my kids and my grandkids, especially, are really struggling with it. It's just, we get teary very easily. Uh, but they've been wonderful. They've been keeping me very busy. You're talking about neighbors. I have neighbors that live just everything that you've said. They, well, every time I thank them, he just gives me a hug and says, your family, we take care of our family where I come from. 
Uh, I'm the Pennsylvania grandma for their five-year-old who lives in Nebraska. So they had me over last night. We had Christmas together. We had dinner and gifts, and she sent me home with casseroles. So talk about neighbors. I've got them. <laughs> he built Bud's ramp. Uh, they are wonderful people, and what an example. Um, and I've got lots of, lots of other friends that have been very supportive. And I'm getting through most of it very well. But when I sat down to do my cards and I wrote my name and not his, I just lost it. I couldn't do it. So I put the cards away, you'll get them next year. <laughs> it's, it's strange the things that, that will set you off. Sky bought a little frame with wings, you know, for Bud, put on the tree. And I'm going through pictures and I came across one where he had the biggest grin on his face and his hand, you know, chin. I lost it for that picture. I looked through the whole box of pictures. I was fine when I hit that one with that big grin on his face. It was like, it's strange. I mean, most of them, most of the time I'm good. <laughs> so anyway, we'll get your cards next year. I just guess I don't need to buy any more for next year. <laughs> Thank you, Shirley. Anything else we'd like to mention this morning? Mom sends her uh, greetings and her love for this church. We were uh, both out last night. We uh, celebrated uh, my aunt's um, birthday at dinner. Then we were over uh, at their house for a while. And on the way home, uh, they live in Sellersville. On the way home, she requested we drive by the church. So we did that too. But uh, she was exhausted this morning. That, uh, and we're going to my, my sister's tonight, so it's best that she uh, rested, you know. And she has, still has trouble in the morning, but she made it a point to uh, to tell everybody that uh, she misses being here. And one of these days, we'll get her back here. Also, please keep uh, continue to keep Colleen in her prayers. She's um, st still struggling with this bronchial infection, and seems to be getting a little bit worse. Uh, Coughing is keeping her up at night for the past few nights, and uh, it got so bad that uh, she had a real sharp pain in her side every time. And she went to urgent care. They thought maybe it was a broken rib from coughing. Took X-rays, nothing broken. So it was probably just a um, pulled muscle. And uh, then her her head was hurting because she was coughing so bad. And uh, this morning now her throat is constrict uh, constricted. She can barely talk. She's just having a real, real, real rough time missing work and everything. So keep her in her prayers, please. Keep her in her prayers, thank you. Anything else this morning? Yeah, my wife has a birthday today. Birthday, happy birthday indeed. Can we sing right now? <laughs> Thank you for playing, Norris. 
And the next page, ah, yes, that's right. We still have our missionary for this week is Joanne Blatt. Um, and we're going to see a video from her momentarily.
Mm-hmm. Pray with me, please, out again. Time and space we left for you to pray as you were led with that silently or loud voice. Walter really is the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to be together with your people. We thank you for hope, for joy, for peace, and for your love, which comes to focus this day in your action on our behalf, in Jesus' birth and our salvation. For this we rejoice and give thanks. Lord, with Becky, we bring to you our prayers for her brother Bill. We, we thank you that they didn't need to open the chest for surgery, but we're able to replace the valve. And we just ask for continued strength and healing for him. Lord, for Annette, we ask that you would bring healing and strength through her ankle. And Lord, as Becky prepares to start this new job, be with her through the transition. In sharing her notice with her boss, we know this is something that she is not looking forward to, and we ask that the transition to the new job will be one that goes smoothly and well. Lord, we thank you that we have Carl with us today. Thank you for this opportunity to renew relationships and to build new ones. We thank you for this gift. Lord, we know that the holidays can be very difficult when we've lost one that we love. Their absence is keen, as Shirley has felt and shared with us. And we know it's difficult. We thank you for friends, for family, for neighbors who provide support and encouragement. But we know the pain is real. And ask that you continue to be with her and her family as they continue to mourn, as they miss Bud. Lord, we thank you for opportunities that we have to be together as families, as he shared that he and Helen were together with her sister to celebrate her birthday. We thank you for the upcoming Christmas celebrations that will be together for this evening. Lord, for Colleen, we ask that you would continue to be with her and that you would bring strength and healing to her body. We know that the bronchial infection has been difficult and complicated, and it sounds as if it's getting worse before it gets better. But we ask that you would bring healing and strength to her. Lord, we ask that you would be with Alex and Dee as they travel, as they make their way home, we ask that you would give them safety and peace as they travel. Father, we thank you for Norris this morning playing for us and sharing his gifts and talents. We ask that you would be with him next week as he shares the message and Craig in the following week. We ask these blessings now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us this household of worship, that we may worship you and continue to fill us with your unconditional love, that we may be disciples of your disciples of Christ, your son, who you sent in love. We spread them out to all the world to see and to feel. Let us pray together the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Would the ushers come forward, please?
recklessly. Help us to do the same. Bless these gifts now, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join with me in our closing hymn, O Come All Ye Faithful. Thank you.